Is it that time again? I can feel it in my bones and in the depths of my soul. It is time for me to make my journey. I do not regret this, and in fact, I revel in this longing. For I, Guida, the one who is called the Great Turtle Mother, am going to lay eggs again. I am like any other child of Sudaiba, a mysterious and powerful thing, unlike anything else in the ocean. Those of us who are demigods and demigoddesses lead very different lives. My brother, Yungando, was born with unending hunger, but he serves a purpose. Without my brother, the sea would become overcrowded. My sister, Movada, was born with an absolute territorial nature, but she too serves a purpose. Without my sister migrating to and fro, my brother, the great white shark, wouldn't have a deterrent. What purpose do I serve? I am the life bringer. I exist so that there are turtles in the sea. This is a wonderful purpose, and one I gladly carry. It is a cool morning when I swim from my usual home. It is far from the reach of the Aoela, hidden from their knowledge. They will never find it. But for me to reach my destination, I will have to swim through their domain. I do not fear them. They never try and hunt me. Still, I am an expecting mother and want only peace and calm. I soar beneath the surface of the sea, with all the freedom and elegance as the birds in the sky. Thousands of fish are around me, and they come in all colors of creation. I love swimming beside them, and the schools of fish feel safe around me. Fish are such simple creatures, and they make excellent company and food. For me to get to where I need to, I will need to eat. Gently, I glide into the collections of fish, and I bite and snag when I can. The fish scatter, but I chase them. This is a fun game, and while I eat my fill, I send them my thoughts. I apologize to them and try to convey why I need their strength. I hope they can understand. Soon the sun fades from the sky, and the ocean grows dark. I keep sailing forward, but I allow myself to sleep. The ocean currents will keep me moving, and I am safe. After all, there is only one who can eat me, and he won't. In my dreams, I see them. The souls of the babies I carry within me. I can feel the warmth of their love, and it strengthens me. Each and every one of them nuzzles me and whispers wonderful things in my mind. I am loved, and so are they. I love you, Mommy. Thank you for carrying us. I can't wait to be born. Thank you, Mommy. I awaken, and my stomach rumbles within me. It is time for more food. After my breakfast, I spot something in the distance, gathered on the ocean floor. I will not go there, for I head to the northeast, but I still marvel at the Siritasi. Their buildings are splendid creations, made from brick and glass, and sometimes the sunlight glints off the walls or the ceilings like pearls. Some of the Siritasi see me, and they try and catch up but I am too fast. They wave at me and send their thoughts to me. They wish me a safe journey, and it makes me smile. 
I come from them, and they always make me feel welcome. I can't believe it! I got to see you! You are so magnificent! Safe journeys, Great Turtle Mother. May your babies be safe from the jaws of Yungando. Please, bless me with fertility, Great Turtle Mother! Once upon a time, my mother Sudaiba took a poor glassmaker Siritasi as a lover, and I was born as a result. I grew, and I learned of my purpose. My people and my mother supported it, and thus my seemingly never-ending cycle began. The Siritasi Great Village is falling further and further behind now. But there will be others. The Siritasi are not like the Aoela, though the Aoela are not terrible. They are what they are. Days and nights pass, over and over, and I push toward the northeast with calm strides. I do not rush, nor do I tarry. I simply flow with the ocean currents and move at a comfortable speed. The water ripples around me, and I gaze around trying to find the source. I spot them below me, as large as I am, if not larger. They are not demigods or goddesses, but instead something more majestic than magical. And these lovely denizens sing. Their songs dance in the water, and it comforts me on this journey. I had hoped to see them, and it is my favorite part of the journey. Do they remember me, I wonder? They swim near me and surround me. Their voices are loud but welcoming. I sway along and they do the same. For hundreds of miles they are with me, comforting me, speaking to me of the things they see, and singing me lullabies. One morning I awaken to find them gone. Were they ever really here? Or are they figments of my imagination? I am silly. Surely they exist. For I exist. I have existed for thousands of years, and yet I have never once seen one of my children or those who descended from them. The routes from my secret home to my destination and back again are not through the parts of the ocean where my babies prefer to go. I know they exist from the fleeting thoughts of others and through my dreams. My life, my purpose, and my existence are strange. I awaken from a long slumber that lasts decades, and then I swim across the sea. I crawl upon a special shore of an island, and then I lay hundreds of eggs. It is a draining experience, and when I am done, I fall asleep. When I awaken, my babies have hatched from their eggs, and they have fled into the sea. I have seen it many times, but there are always tracks that lead to me before they venture to the sea. I always leave that sacred island, and then I swim back home, only to fall into another deep sleep. On and on, the cycle continues. On and on, I am willing to swim, for I love my babies. Will I ever get to meet them? Will I ever get to swim with them? Do they know that their mother loves them dearly? I hope so. I swim on but I gaze around to see the vastness of the ocean. It is beautiful in how large it is. I am so blessed. 
One thing is strange. I have not seen young Gondo throughout this journey. He always greets me as I swim, never to attack, but to apologize. My heart breaks when he tells me that he has eaten my babies, or the babies of my babies. It is not his fault. It is in his nature. The ocean feels different somehow, and I cannot fathom why that is. More days pass, and I know that I am halfway to where I must go. My heart tingles in my chest, for soon I will give life once more. My dreams are paradise, and I swim with the souls of my babies, my beloved children. I hope that they can feel my support, my love and adoration. A new school of fish gather around me again, and I feed. While the fish scatter, they do not flee away. Do they know what I carry within me? Do they grant me the strength so that I can arrive on that island? I believe so. For once I have my fill, the school of fish stay around me. These fish are different, and they nestle close to me, warm me when I sleep, and then they let themselves be eaten. I eat the last of the fish, and yet I do not feel alone. As I dream tonight, I see the souls of thousands of turtles swimming with me. I smile at them. I know each of them individually. When I awaken, though, I cannot see them. I feel them. I have heard of the one called Isaba, the Great Spirit Mother, and I wonder if she gave me some small boon, in the form of letting the souls of my children comfort me. Should I ever meet her? I will ask her many things. There are no fish around, and so I must stay hungry. I will be fine. I always am, and the strange school of fish still sustains me enough to get through the desolate and empty part of the sea. I remember this part of the journey well, and it is always the place where I think the most. Would I ever wish for this cycle to stop? Have I given enough to the ocean? Millions of turtles have been born through me, and perhaps elsewhere in safe and secure sections of the sea, my kind thrives. I am tired, far more tired than I ever remember being, and I wonder. Will I grow more weary as the cycles continue? This journey is harder than the last one, and it was harder than the one before that. How many more do I have left? Am I wrong for wishing for an end? What awaits me when the cycles stop? Something is swimming up to me. With a strange shape, indeed. I recognize her as she gets closer. Moldova gets below me. One of her eyes meets with mine. We do not say anything, for neither she nor I were born with voice. We feel one another. From her, I feel great warmth and love, and something more. I can tell that my children are safer in her domains. Though she eats some of them when no other food exists, she does not eat all. She protects them. I am happy to have her as a sister. Something else enters my mind: a great joy and sense of freedom. I can tell she has eaten a powerful enemy, but I am not sure who. My sister is fierce. We swim together for hundreds of miles, 
and she wraps several tentacles around my shell. Not to slow me or hinder me, and certainly not to harm me. This is her way to show love. She leaves me, and I begin my final approach to the island. However, something else swims up to me, and I can't quite believe it. I blink many times, and yet they remain. I am not sure if they are my children, or children of my children, but I know they are mine. I soar all around and dip and rise, and they swim with me. I smile at them, and they return my love. I have heard of you. You are the Great Mother. Thank you. My mother was born from you. I love you. Because of your love, thousands live. More than that, probably. Thank you for giving us life. They are beautiful and quite small compared to me. Then again, I am born from the sea goddess. This is more wonderful than I could have ever dreamed. One nuzzles against my face as we swim, and my heart breaks, for I have tasted paradise awake. I sense the island now and my kind swim away. I send my love after them, and they leave me with theirs. I breach the water and crawl upon the shore of this uninhabited island. This has always been my safe space, and I crawl to the same spot on the beach where I have laid my eggs before. It is now time. The process is over, and my mind is starting to descend beneath the sea of weariness. For as long as I can, I stare at the hundreds of turtle eggs. Can they feel my love? Will they be safe? Will they be happy? I hope so. I fight with all my strength to keep my eyes open. For every second they are, is another second I have with my family. I am so tired. Finally. Blackness. I open my eyes, and I see the tiny trails that lead to the sea. I see many have come to me. How long did they stay? Could they comprehend who I was? Did they know I would swim the span of the ocean a million times more for them? This time is different, for I am not alone. I look to my side, and there is a woman sitting beside me. She is not a Neoella, nor is like the Siritasi. She is like me, but so much more. And then, I know, the goddess Meoryu smiles at me, for she can feel it. Feel that I know who she is. This woman is my sister, or rather, half-sister. Half or not, she and I are family. I look back to the trails left behind by my babies and I can feel tears in my eyes. I watched as your children hatched. They are beautiful, and you should be proud. Many stayed with you for days, hoping that you would awaken, but they had to go. Some wanted to stay longer, but I made sure they didn't die. Your babies will thrive. They know your love and they will carry it on. It is finally time for you to rest. Her words are comforting, 
and she rubs my shell. Tears are in her eyes, and then I understand her meaning. I blink, and then there is another woman beside me, sitting on the beach. She is older, but she has a kind spirit and even kinder eyes. And then I know. Are you ready, great turtle mother? My eyes grow heavy and my head starts to droop. The soft sand comforts my chin. My insides twist a little. I'm not afraid. Things will be fine. I am ever hopeful. My sister said my babies would thrive, and they know of my love for them. A smile creases my face. My last smile.